In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. Joining us in the studio is Dr. Wolfgang Oertel from Marburg University Hospital. He's a neurologist and an expert on restless legs syndrome. Hello and welcome Hello. to In Good Shape. So what are the other factors associated with mm. RLS? Well, besides genes, it could be kidney failure, so you need dialysis, or iron deficiency. In pregnancy, it can come up, or in, in medication with certain antidepressant compounds. So there are a lot of triggers. Could it actually be that um, the restless leg syndrome is just a symptom of other disorders? Mm. Well, we think it's a syndrome. It uh, exists of different types of problems. And below these syndrome are different diseases which do not know yet. It's like uh, speaking German and then we have different dialects from Bavaria. You speak High German, you speak Hessian. So we now have to find out what are the precise disorders presenting with the same problem. How many people actually suffer from restless leg syndrome? Well, it's amazingly high number. In the Caucasian population, it's about 10% suffering from the yeah suffering from these symptoms, but uh, three percent need treatment. Three. Do children actually get it? Yeah, some. Ch if the family has RLS, it's very often that children have it too, and they are often misdiagnosed. So in this case, you definitely need a sleep laboratory recording to present they have restless leg syndrome. Yeah. There you see how the legs jerk, you know. Yeah, and we got a viewer question to this topic ah. of your Ines in Germany wrote us that, that she herself has uh, RLS for nearly 14 years and her son, which is seven years yeah. old, has been diagnosed with that. And, and um, he was not sleeping well and, and the, the school teacher said that he suffers from something like attention deficit disorder. Yeah, that's the common misdiagnosis. They must do a sleep recording in this particular boy to okay. clarify the situation. The treatment is totally different. And, and why is that um, RLS um, has the symptoms only during sleep and overnight? Our viewer Tata Viet from the US asked this question. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I can't answer this. Mm, I think I put this on my first research program. This is fantastic. Nobody can answer this question. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Okay. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and if the legs are moving and if you have to, to, to move, it's, it's very bothering to the yeah, patients. Yeah. And, but, but could the symptom be actually life-threatening? Um, well, just imagine you have a fractured leg, you get a plaster. Okay. It's unbelievable the patient suffers because he cannot move the leg. The nurse on the ward doesn't know about it, the doctor may not know it. So he will go into a stage which is really terrible. And some people, very few people, but some think about suicide in this, pop, in this situation. So we have to increase the awareness of this disease. That's, the, that's, I think, the key point, to increase that the awareness that this disease exists, restless leg syndrome. Mm -hmm. okay. Many of our viewers uh, with twitchy legs ask per that perhaps they would have RLS. So if they go to the doctor, to the neurologist, mm -hmm. how do you actually diagnose RLS? Well, I mean, first you, you, you talk about this when you, you twitch when you fall asleep, that is totally, totally normal. Okay. But if you come and say, hey, my legs start jerking or it's painful, then you ask four questions. The first question is, do you have this strange sensation like tearing, burning, itching, scratching, someone takes a torch and flame at your skin or ants run around your legs, something like this. This is the first question. The second is, do you have an urge to move? So you feel you have to stand up to get rid of this terrible And then third, it happens in the evening, often in front of the TV show, it's a boring TV show, then you get relaxed, and then it starts and gets worse until midnight. And the fourth is, they stand up and then everything is gone. It's just gone. And they are great. And then they go back to, to the bed and it starts all over. They get nuts, you know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> taking cold showers to treat restless leg syndrome. Do you have any other tips? Well, taking this up. Cold chamber. Just go into the room where it's extremely cold. Or you take a brush and brush your legs. And one proposal I may give is select a job where you are active at night, like night shifts. Oh, really? Mm, yeah. I mean... I haven't done a study on that, but that's obvious. If you can run around at, and, until yeah. 2 o'clock, you don't have a problem. But when I work at night, I have to sleep during daytime. And uh, what are my legs doing then? Huh. 
I didn't think about it, but uh, hmm, I, have, I have to find out. Sorry. Very, so, so, <laughs> Great topic. What, are what about lifestyle? Talking about lifestyle yeah. with the night shift. Um, our viewer, uh, Tahir Malik from Saudi Arabia, asked if um, restless leg syndrome can be mm. cured with lifestyle and diet. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, people tell different tricks. Some say it's getting worse, and when I take red wine, if I take a particular type of nuts, or some say I just stop drinking coffee, then because it gets worse, and then other people say I take sauerkraut, you know. Okay. And uh, then Very they say it's fantastic. Solution. So I take this advice, go to other patients and tell them, test out, avoid red wine, take sauerkraut. They come back, no, it doesn't work. So what I propose is you go to a patient advocacy group and ask around and then select the one which helps you. But we need research. We just need a lot of research to find out. So and, and if we want to speak to a specialist who knows the research, the patients go to the neurologist. And what do you do then? Well, I would advise, uh, I'm sorry, drugs which have been right. tested for years, where we know it's safe, they are tolerable and they are effective over five or ten years. And there are now three classes. One is uh, you substitute dopamine in brain. So it's a dopamine uh, substitution. The second one is a compound which you use for chronic pain, which blocks the signals of pain in the spinal cord. And the third is similar, that is opioids. Oh. And the opioids you use when the others fail. Okay. But they are all tested now, and they are at the pharmacy. Speaking about L-DOPA, this mm. is what we usually use to treat Parkinson's disease. Yeah. So has restless legs anything to do with Parkinson's disease? No. No. And patients with restless leg syndrome, do they more often get Parkinson's disease? No. Definitely not. Okay. You use L-DOPA to test whether restless leg syndrome reacts to this particular type of drug. But then you take another drug which, long, which has a long-acting effect. Can you do anything to prevent getting RLS? Mm, I would be happy to say yes, but I, no. There is nothing you can prevent, I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. So even when your parents and grandparents had restless leg syndrome, there's nothing you can... You cannot take L-DOPA, for instance, just to prevent the symptoms. No, from please it. don't. No, no, because that... when If, if you do this, if you took L-DOPA continuously every day, in fact, it gets worse. So L-DOPA is a short-acting and short-term therapy to find out we can treat, but then you should avoid it. Professor Otto, thanks so much for telling us everything about this mysterious disease. And so if you've got any problems with your legs, with twitchy legs, just go and see your neurologist to shine some light on this.